But first, medical prescriptions aren't usually much fun, but this time the patients get high and the prescribers have some fun names like the Beverly Hills Cannabis Club. Yep, it's called medical marijuana, legal in many states in America. Should it be the same in New Zealand? That's right, but it's not likely here any time soon. But in America, it is a multi-billion dollar industry. And as Sarah Hall found out when she met not so much an entrepreneur, but a gunjapreneur. Driving through the manicured streets of Beverly Hills, Cheryl Schumann looks every inch the Hollywood wife. She's blonde, glamorous, even has the Ferrari to match. And I'm feeling good. But there is more to Cheryl than meets the eye. A lot more. You see, Cheryl Schumann is a gunjapreneur one of the growing number of Americans making their millions out of marijuana. It's just like the dot-com boom from years ago. This is the pot-com boom, the green rush. Everyone's rushing in to get their position, and those that are in position first will be the billionaires of this industry. Here in California, cannabis has gone mainstream. It was legalized for medical patients in 1996. Nearly 20 years on, pretty much anyone can get a prescription. Now, 17 states, or more than a third of the country, have followed suit legalizing medical marijuana. All of a sudden, there's serious cash to be made. Experts estimate $47 billion will be generated by the legal cannabis industry by 2016. So clearly, people are making billions. They're making billions. So you want to be the Mark Zuckerberg. Of I would love to be the female form of it. I, I very much look forward to leading and inspiring women across the country to be a part of this movement. If like you the will. Avon lady. Kind of like <laughs> the Avon lady, exactly. So how did Cheryl become a cannabis queen? Like many Americans, she's a master of reinvention. Cheryl grew up dirt poor on an Appalachian tobacco farm. So poor she featured on a story about the country's most impoverished families. But Cheryl was determined to claw her way out of poverty, making her first million in her 20s by clipping coupons. Hi, I'm Cheryl Peart, and for the past four years, I've been turning my trash into cash, and I'm going to show you tonight how you can too. Then she became optician to the stars. People used glasses for films, and instead of shopping all over town, she could bring the glasses to them. But a few years ago, her glamorous life came to an end when Cheryl was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. A lot of chills, a lot of pain today. So hopefully, hopefully things will get better. To help with the nausea and pain, a friend suggested she smoke cannabis. To her surprise, not only did Cheryl come off her medication, her cancer disappeared. Cannabis gave me my life back. It sounds silly, but it's a very spiritual thing to know that God gave us this. And I feel through positive attitude and prayer and meditation and using cannabis as medicine saved my life. Cheryl Schumann has been medicating with cannabis since 1996. While it's absolutely medically unproven that Cheryl's cancer went into remission because of cannabis, she's become the poster girl for legalizing cannabis in the United States. People call me the Martha Stewart of marijuana. Not everyone will agree with my philosophies or what I do for a living. They can't deny the fact that cannabis is here. People are interested. It's a hot topic everywhere. And I think by having a mainstream face for it or that girl next door slash I could be your mom, I could be your sister, I could be your aunt, teacher or doctor, I think it allows people to feel comfortable with me and they actually listen to what I have to say. The medication is in here then you just screw it in. That mainstream face has allowed Cheryl to successfully launch her cannabis business. She sells everything from vaporizers to pipes. She has a magazine that turns over millions a year. 
Even Hollywood has come knocking, wanting to make a reality series about her life. And I know you've brought a bunch of stuff yes. here to show us, educate yes. us all. Yes. Coming from New Zealand, it seems odd to us. But here Cheryl is on a daytime talk show, espousing the benefits of cannabis and showing off some of her cannabis-related products. You can use it in oils, butters, tinctures, so anything that you cook with, you can do cannabis-infused cooking. This is a great example of some edibles. You can make cookies, brownies, lemon bars. Those look good. They're really, de and they're delicious. They really are. And I am a little hungry. <laughs> it's taking something that's gotten a really bad reputation, putting the truth out there, putting a positive spin on it, and rebranding it. And I think that's what this is all about. I see it as a rebranding campaign for the modern-day cannabis consumer. Cheryl has taken her love of cannabis further than most. Not only is she making her millions off the herb, she's the president of the, wait for it, Beverly Hills Cannabis Club. Welcome to High Society. Is that a gorgeous bud? Look at that bud. Take a smell of that. The club gets together for all sorts of things, including cannabis tastings. So we've got lavender, we've got cherry pie, and blue Maui tonight. Blue Maui. I know a number of people like me who are professional people who use cannabis instead of a glass of wine to relax in the evening, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So what's on the menu here at the Beverly Hills Cannabis Club tonight, David? Well, let's see. I did an oatmeal crusted chicken with an herb pesto sauce on top, baked off together. And we We've all know what herb he's talking about. The club also holds cannabis dinner parties, even hiring an executive chef for the occasion. Can I try a little bit of your pesto or yeah. over there? Let's see what's, what it tastes like. Right, this has clearly got cannabis in it. I just want to see what the... It's really good. It just tastes like normal pesto to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's we good. Got cheese and nuts and everything off like the regular pesto should be. I tasted, but I didn't swallow. <laughs> so what could we expect if medical marijuana was made legal in New Zealand? Well, you'll get an idea after the break, and it is pretty out there. How hard was it for you to get that medical marijuana card that allows you to shop in places like this? Uh, the biggest thing for me was I was having trouble sleeping and getting a deep enough, consistent sleep. So we've seen how medical marijuana has turned into a multi-billion dollar business in the United States, but is that what lawmakers intended? Well, I doubt it, probably. And as Sarah Hall explains, in California, at least, the pot shops supplying the cannabis are making a complete mockery of the law. This seems very bizarre to me. I mean, here we are in the middle of Beverly Hills and we're holding up marijuana plants and we can't get arrested. <laughs> I know, it's funny, right? So, so what I'm doing is I'm starting my plants. This is the time of the year, it's called getting in the dirt and I prefer to grow outdoors so that the little babies can get strong and go out and grow into great big yeah. 14 foot, five exactly. pound yielders. This Good plant God. will yield about five pounds outdoors. It will become about 14 feet high wow. and about 14 feet in circumference. Right. Hiya, hiya, baby. And this is where Cheryl brings her tiny plants to blossom in the California sunshine. With her lookalike daughter also in on the act tending the plants, it's kind of like a Garden of Eden for every red blooded pot smoking male. Oh, those are my hands. <laughs> It's very sticky, here, Phil. But don't be fooled, this is a serious business. Cheryl's marijuana is sold throughout the state of California. One of the best things about legalization, according to American users, is quality control and the explosion of different varieties. The scientists have gone to town and created hybrids of varying strengths. You just have to tell your local pharmacist what you're after. I'm suffering from jet lag. <laughs> Which one? A very, very strong sativa to keep you awake, depending if you have meetings. Or if you just want to sleep and recheck up the next another day, my brownie. 
It's called Lose a Day Brownie. <laughs> Flying from New Zealand to Los Angeles, you eat a brownie when you land, and you wake up, you'll be on my time. <laughs> no, nothing would have happened. Nothing would have happened. <laughs> Clearly, it's a fine time to be in the cannabis industry. The gunjapreneurs are making everything from candy to cookies to chocolate, tea, honey, even olive oil. You can take an eyedropper full of liquid yeah. and put that into a cup of orange juice or soda or whatever. The owner of this establishment, Sam Humid, says edibles enable users to measure exactly how much they're taking. Advice he should have taken himself. Like I was earlier consuming, consuming some cannabis today, and I feel like I look really high right now. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of do. Just, just saying. <laughs> I kind of wish I hadn't had an edible that just put me at that level at the beginning of the day, and this wouldn't have happened. But that's <laughs> what life is like. I suppose it is one of the risks of going to a shop like this, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There are as many as a thousand pot shops like Sam's all over the city, but legalisation hasn't been all smooth sailing. Gonna pay a visit to my doctor. It's a long shot, but I gotta try. He hands me a list of all. While there's plenty of science proving marijuana helps with numerous ailments, the law has become a laughing stock because of the ease of getting a doctor's prescription. Weed card, it's what I need. Here on Venice Beach, so-called green doctors are set up every few hundred metres, touting for business. This customer agrees a medical weed card isn't hard to come by. How hard was it for you to get that medical marijuana card that allows you to shop in places like this? How hard was it? Um, it actually wasn't very difficult, um, especially because I have a legitimate problem. So. The problem? Uh, the biggest thing for me was I was having trouble sleeping and getting a deep enough, consistent sleep. Whatever happened to a glass of warm milk? But it's not an addiction, because my doctor gave me a prescription. It's supposed to be for people that have illnesses. Well, that was a joke. They sold it to anybody that come along with a prescription and they had doctors they could send them to to write a prescription for anything. The mayor of Orange County, Bruce Broadwater, has been waging a war against pot shops, successfully closing down hundreds of dispensaries in his area. So do you think people take advantage of these dispensaries? Yes, absolutely. They like, you know, they like the life it gave them, the, and I'm sure it did relieve a lot of pain. <laughs> How many of these people did you think were genuinely sick? Oh, maybe 1%. <laughs> Clearly, marijuana is still a legal battleground in the United States, but it may just be this Beverly Hills marijuana mom who manages to successfully rebrand the drug, once known as the devil's weed. Cheryl Schumann believes its use is becoming more and more legitimate, and legalisation is the only way the United States and New Zealand should go. In New Zealand, one of the arguments has been made that if we decriminalise cannabis, it's a gateway, really, for children to get into harder drugs. Well, I, I think that's a fallacy. I think that's a myth. And quite frankly, there have been studies all over the world, Portugal and other um, areas who have legalised cannabis and other drugs that show that regulating cannabis is far more effective to keep cannabis out of your children's hands. It works. Regulation works. It's proven. Fifty-two percent of Americans favor widespread legalization. Both Colorado and Washington states have done just that and legalized marijuana for anyone over 18. Some believe the genie has now escaped the bottle and marijuana will soon be legal in more states than not, providing endless opportunities for savvy gunjapreneurs like Cheryl Schumann. She says she's not just smoking grass, she's making hay while the sun shines. Yeah, right, making hay while the sun shines. In New Zealand, though, it's fair to say that feelings run high on this yeah, issue. Yeah, they do, and you saw that in that public response to our recent series on The Vote when we asked uh, you whether or not soft drugs should be decriminalised. 
Yeah, 72% of New Zealanders said yes, soft drugs like cannabis and synthetic cannabis should be decriminalised. Just 28% said no. I think it's fair to say, though, that there's not really a push uh, or a push anywhere, really, from any of the legislators, MPs, political parties for any kind of change uh, in this.